Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. Bouton, and I wanted to give you some hints and tips on our density lab. Remember that the point of this lab is simply to practice decimal operations. Uh, in particular, we're going to be using subtraction and division to work out the density of these eight items. So we're going to have eight subtraction problems and eight division problems. I'm going to go ahead and work on this, uh, this red mystery block right here that to give us as an example and I'll walk through this one and then I'll give you a couple tips uh, and some hints on the other ones as well so first thing I, I'm going to put it on here and we have two and a half grams so I, I'll write that down and I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, pretty soon uh, next thing you know I submerge this in the water and I note the level of the water is 29.6 it's 25.5 uh, before and 29.6 afterwards. So let me go to my work right here and let's take a look at what I'll do with those. I've kind of taken a screenshot of what that looks like in the water. So on my red block, I'm going to set up my problem here, which uh, remember it is the mass divided by the volume right here. So the mass was 2. 0.5 and then the volume well I have to figure out what the volume was it is the water level is 29.6 right now and it began at 25.5 so I need to subtract these to find out how much water was displaced after I placed the block in the water so uh, I got 4.1 that is milliliters so my math problem looks like this right here. So 2.5 divided by 4.1. So let's go ahead and do our division. Setting up my 2 and 5 tenths right here. 4 and 1 tenths is the divisor. Remember the dividend is the top number up here. It is dividend divided by divisor. 4.1 is on the outside. Well, we're not ready to divide just yet because we have a decimal number in our divisor and we don't like those, so we're going to multiply by a power of 10. That means we only need one space to jump right here, so we're multiplying by 1, 10. That's actually 10 to the first power. That means I just multiply by 1, 10. That's all. If we multiply by 2 tens, we would say 10 to the second power. That's multiplying by 10 two times, so... In this case, we're just multiplying by one group of 10 here. That'll make a whole number 41. And we also don't forget to do it to this number here, okay? So we don't want to just do it to one number. We've got to do it to both numbers. And that places our decimal right here in our answer. All right, so now we're ready to go through the division process. So I'm going to place, I'm going to need some zeros over here, I believe. I'm just going to put three. I like to just put three just to get ready and prepared. So how many groups of 41 are in 25? That's our whole number. And of course, there are zero groups of 41 in 25. So I'm going to move to the next place value and look at 250. So I really kind of need to, I, I use estimating. I, I think like 40. 40 is easy to count by and estimate. So one group of 40 two groups of 40, three groups of 40. Um, I can double the three groups because 120 is easy to double. So that would be six groups over here and I'm pretty close to that. So I'm gonna estimate six groups of 41. And then I'm going to multiply six times 41, which you can do that off the side of your paper. You can do it over here, six times 41. Um, and then we're going to use subtraction so 250 minus 246 is 4 right there. And then we're ready to bring down our next digit, which is 0, uh, 40. Okay, so that's really close, all right? but it's still a 0 right there. So 0 is our answer. Don't forget to place a 0 as a quotient if there is 0. Remember, every time we bring a digit down, you have to put a digit up in the answer. Every time. You have to bring it down, you have to stop and divide, and then put that answer up there. Uh, so our answer is 0, and I'm going to go ahead and put 
the next digit down, and now I need to put an answer up here. And I know it's going to be a very high number because I know it's going to be 9. And if I multiply that out, I don't necessarily have to. I, I get 369. And, um, and it, whatever our remainder is, at this point, I don't uh, even care what our remainder is because I'm going to stop in the thousandths place right here and round my number to the nearest hundredths place. So I'm going to stop this number. I want to stop it right there, okay, and round it. So I'm going to say um, 0 0.6 and then it rounds up to 1. So that is going to be my density. So D equals 0 0.61 and that is grams per milliliter. Okay, that's the unit for density right there. So that's just kind of a walk through with that red block thing right there as they, they give as an example. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this, in this example we had to divide by a decimal. There are three of those materials that you'll divide by a decimal number. So when you do the water, the gold, the lead, and the that mystery, that question mark, the mystery, those will all have decimal divisors. Okay, so when you subtract with the, the number, the water levels here, the numbers you get, um, you're going to have decimal divisors for the gold, the lead, and the question mark. However, for the others, the foam, uh, what else do we have? Ice, we've got the iron, and the wood. Those four right there will have um, whole numbers. So you're going to be dividing by whole numbers. And I believe I'm leaving one of them off, the rubber. Okay, I don't have that right in front of me right now. So you'll have to figure out, is that a decimal divisor or a whole number? I'll leave that as a mystery. For these, the whole number, when you do subtraction, you may get, and I'm going to show you this example down here because I've got the picture. right there. Here's the ice right here. So I want you to come up to the top here so we can see you. There we go. You can see the water levels uh, for the ice. So when you're doing ice and you're subtracting, I see 35.5 is the level. The water began at 25.5 and you end up with 10.0. Don't forget to get rid of that zero. So you don't want to set up a division problem and then have 10 point zero out here so you don't want a point zero you can just take that zero off and that's your whole number right there so you don't have to multiply by 10 or anything you just can remove that final zero from the number and then you've got a whole number so use these tips and tricks uh, make sure you're moving your decimal and your quotient correctly and um, you know double check your work make sure it's good Remember, the whole point is just to practice these skills. All right, that's it. Uh, go ahead and submit your work. I may um, send you a note after you submit it saying, hey, why don't you double check some of these problems and uh, give you some more practice. So, thank you very much. Give me a question. If you have a question, you know, shoot me in the, the message in Schoology or on email. Thank you. Bye-bye.